it just was I don't know uh, obviously this committee chair I mean you know no disrespect uh, but Rory was just beyond control and I at uh, watching this hearing and we're going to bring on a uh, Senator Joanne Brown Senator Tello um watching this hearing I didn't even know whose oversight hearing it was I didn't even know who was the subject of the oversight hearing because I thought it was a port oversight hearing but then it sometimes it seemed like Rory was the chair of the committee as um, he was saying, no, I want you to provide me with the information. And it really was just frustrating for the public who probably tuned in to get some answers and not see this whole, I mean, Rory was so comfortable that he had an agenda. <laughs> I mean, figuratively and literally. He had an agenda um, and he said, hey, yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come on, we're going to do this, and then we got this. 15 minute closing presentation. We got a big surprise. It'll plot twist for you guys. So, yeah, I just felt like it was just way too comfortable in there. Um, and then uh, Senator Joanne Brown here, he had basically uh, was allowed to read off uninterrupted a list of uh, port employees that uh, he alleged you had hired uh, during your watch at the port. Um, and that's the thing for me. It's like so much of this hearing was focused on looking backwards. Mm hmm instead of looking at what's happening right now. Um, so I guess just we'll start there, uh, Senator Joanne. I want to ask, do you feel you were set up? Well, you know, it's unfortunate what happened yesterday. I mean, there, there's been so much effort on behalf of the current general manager in the port uh, to project that everything's all good and wonderful. And, you know, isn't it just a great day? And when you scratch a little bit beneath the surface, you see a whole hornet's nest of negativity that's coming out with regards to their response. And you're right, uh, you know, Rory, the current port GM certainly tried to direct that that hearing according to his agenda, but you know, we're kind of like in different seats. I mean, we're the current members of the legislature and certainly Senator Nelson is the current oversight chair. But of course that's the agenda. I mean, you know, this issue came up weeks ago with regards to an individual there that was hired uh, you know, that, that was uh, let go of uh, and has uh, admitted to uh, official misconduct. And that's unfortunately is where all this started uh, in coming to light and certainly bringing to our attention a loophole in the law with regards to official misconduct being left to the discretion of the hiring authority. Um, and now look, I mean, all this dust kicking that has been coming up left, right, up and down has to make you wonder uh, you know, they're trying to distract from that reality and, and you know, more is coming to the surface, I think, than they're trying to, to, to have come forward and for people to be aware of. And it just doesn't add up. I mean, if, if everything's all clean and transparent, I, I don't think we'd see the type of uh, tone and conduct under which the current general manager conducted himself. And then to make allegations, I mean, I know what I know, having served in that capacity for six years. Uh, I'm very clear with my directives. I, I don't, you know, I don't think Chris or, Bri or Sabrina, you're going to walk away and go, gosh, what exactly did Senator Brown, what did Joanne exactly mean by that? I'm a little confused. I'm pretty direct with, with what I have to say. Uh, and right now, and even for former employees there that I worked with or that are currently there, uh, you know, to try to make up stories or try to, to make disparaging remarks that, that are not truthful and not reveal their own conflicts to try to make it appear that, oh, things were not up and up. Uh, you know, you got to wonder what's going on. And it, it just doesn't display well, certainly to me as a legislator. And I, I'm sure the public, you have a very well-informed audience. I mean, they listen to your show because they want to know what's going on in their community. I mean, I don't need to say this is how they should see things. I'm sure they on their own listening and making their own observations will come to their own determination of what, what they, they see and believe is happening at the Port Authority of Guam these days. Uh, I wanted to ask Senator Tello this uh, question. You know, we had uh, raised here on the show um, some of the potential conflicts that uh, Senator Talina may have. Again, just to refresh, her mom's sister's married to Rory. Her dad's brother is a high-level manager at the port. Um, but I really thought that we would hear or see a disclosure of this relationship at the beginning of the hearing. Um, but we didn't see that, Senator Tello. Do you think it would be, I mean, even if, uh, according to the law, Senator Talina might be getting through some loophole don't you think that we should get some type of disclosure i think it's it's yeah good morning first yeah. chris and sabrina and uh, of course jason and all the kuam staff there appreciate every morning you come up in and, and informing us i definitely go to you guys for information uh usually in the morning to find out what's going on because sometimes we don't get that uh 
as a minority in the legislature. But, you know, absolutely, I think transparency is very important. I think you're holding a position as the oversight chair of um, an agency where you have close relatives, you know, everyone from your father's brother who works there, as well as your, your mother's sister's uh, sister, well, your mother's sister married to the, the GM, that, you know, usually a lot of times senators um, out of, you know, transparency will announce that at the beginning, you know, of this. And I know that it was in the news earlier that uh, it was brought up and I was, I too was wondering if, if the uh, chairwoman was going to um, make mention of it, but uh, she didn't and it's, it's her prerogative, you know, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's out there for everyone to know. So whether she did it or not, like I said, she's the oversight chair, she has control of it. And uh, I, I guess she doesn't seem to have, there's a conflict at all. I mean, it's, I think too, during the public hearing yesterday, it, it showed that uh, I don't think she was favoring anyone there. If, if anything, she was trying to keep uh, a person who has a, a gift of gab, which is, you know, former Senator Rory Spicio, now director of the port, who can just talk his way through anything. And uh, she was trying to set him straight and saying, let's stick to the conversation here. And, uh, and several times when a question was asked of him, you know, he, he would throw the question back. That's, that's a classic example. When you don't want to answer a question, you throw a question back. And that's what he was doing. It was, it was totally disingenuous. He could have answered the question, especially when Senator Brown asked him with regards to, um, you know, what kind of um, <clears throat> crimes uh, of these individuals were committed, what were they? And he kept asking, oh, which specific? He knows exactly what we're asking for. And, and it's unfortunate because, you know, what we are trying to do, and I think the chairwoman of, of the Port Authority is trying to do is bring, you know, it, it's the integrity you know, of the port is in check here. And that's all she's trying to do. We're, we're trying to keep the reputation of the current employees, you know, uh, you know support support the current employees and uh, protect the merit of hiring and not using political hires. And that's basically, you know, what has been going on. You know, you're seeing a bunch of stacking jobs. You know, you got an election in, a, in less than a couple of years to come up and uh, you're looking at all these hirings. And then you look at the CRE report, the money's not there. How are we going to pay for these hires? You know, you get uh, places like autonomous agencies, like the port, the airport, and some of their agencies that generate revenue that has not seen a fall like we've seen in the general fund, where, you know, this is a time for these autonomous agencies to help the government out. But these are the areas that you're stacking political hires, you know, and it's obvious that these hires that are coming in are, are questionable. Now, I'm a person that believes in second chances. I do believe in second chances. But why would you put an individual, um, let's say a, a person who is re a recovering alcoholic, why would you put him behind the bar to run the bar? You're dangling a carrot in front of someone's eye. And some of these individuals who have convictions yeah. uh, with, that deal with drugs, mm. um, I just think the port is not a place to put these individuals. It's not the Lighthouse you know, Recovery Center. Other other areas. Areas. Yeah. Sorry? But, but Senator, I think I think that this is part of the subterfuge and the deflection is that we're spending time, wasting time, talking about whether or not we believe in giving second chances. That's not what this is about. And in this hearing, I felt like they muddied the water by bringing on Jesse Mendiola at the very end of it. It was clearly orchestrated. Um, yeah, I, and, and, you know, I and, but, but Senator, let me just finish. I think that for them to say that this is about second chances, I just don't believe that prison guards who are involved in smuggling meth into the prison and who are fired for official misconduct, they just don't deserve a second chance right away in the very least. Right. Well, I, you know, I, like I uh, mentioned in the past, you know, I, I have, I, I think many of us, and I, I received an email this morning from a Tim Santos. I don't know if it's a true email, but it's, uh, you know, I'm starting to get threats, you know, from, uh, I guess, some kind of relation with the port or <clears throat> some something that's going on. But I'm, I'm now currently 
you know, people are texting me, sending me emails. I don't know if they're true, but I think every family on this Guam, on, on Guam has been touched by some way of, of drugs, you know, this, this disease of drugs. I had a sister who um, we tried many times to give her second chances and <clears throat> tried to help her out. And I do believe in, in trying to rehabilitate, you know, but sometimes, um, I mean, we did everything we can and she fell to drugs. She passed away like many people who have been addicted to this. But what I'm saying is, I know it has nothing to do with second chances that you mentioned with regards to that. This is about the integrity of the port. This is about a port of entry, not just the port, but the airport as well. But you don't dangle a carrot from someone who's been, you know, formerly a, a drug addict or, or involved in drugs and put him in a place where it's tempting to go back to the old way, you know? That is my greatest concern here. Um, Jesse Mendiola is is a, a, a really nice guy. I met him for the first time. He was very open, you know, I, I don't know how many convictions he had. He, he did a whole story on it. But I just think that we have to be very cautious on who we're hiring. And for Rory to put him, you know, parade him like he did at the end of that, that uh, hearing, was I think it was not called for uh, we asked for a list of individuals I don't feel you know well maybe Jesse had no problem with it coming forward he's done it personally but what about the other individuals yeah. now we want to get the information that we asked for that Rory did not provide to us yeah. just to be transparent and for him to be so argumentative during the whole process just leads me to believe that he's trying to hide something. Yeah. He's trying to cover up something. Senator uh, you know, and Joanne, let, let's go over to Senator uh, Joanne. So uh, do you agree with Senator Tello that at the end of the hearing, did we know any more about the why it was called in the first place? Because I don't feel like we really got any answers, and I, I feel like Rory controlled the agenda. He did, and, and Talina didn't really back him in a corner. Um, there was a, a point where uh, Senator Talina had said that uh, Rory had agreed over the phone to provide her with the information about criminal history of any of, of all the people who were hired at the port. Um, but she didn't put it in the FOIA, which is such a rookie mistake. I mean, that I can't even get. Like, I write a ton of FOIAs, and you got when you write a FOIA, you got to write a FOIA. Like, it's got to be like this, or nothing's going to get through. Um, and so what I would have... Uh, I just think Senator Nelson set it up because she was the one who asked for this post audit investigation and it wasn't even for um, Senator Mary Torres's administration. Yeah. It was like from 2017. That's when Senator Brown was the general manager to 2020 to the current. So that the door was open for yeah. Rory to go in and say, Senator Brown, she did this, she did that, she did that, she did this. And then, if you want to know what I did, you tell me. Give me some names. Yeah. That was a... <laughs> I mean, Senator Joanne, what, you know what? I tweeted something about this. It almost looks like these, these, like maybe Senator Talina and whoever else, they're just falling all over themselves trying to like get you in a bad situation. And it's unfortunate because in trying to do that, people are getting away with stuff. So what did you make of the fact that Rory was allowed to read a Bible of everyone Joanne Brown hired... And the, the chair didn't interrupt him, didn't say anything. Yet when he was asked to provide the same type of information about people he hired under his watch, he was just a smart ass about it. And he was allowed to be. Well, and, and I think the public gets to see that display and, and make their own determination. I mean, uh, you know, it, there is a process as we discussed yesterday, there's a process with regards to hiring. There, there's an HR process. And, and certainly as, as this discussion has gone on, um, you know, I've stood by that process, and if it's followed, uh, these type of issues should be filtered out and brought forth. But it's certainly going to give me an opportunity, as other members of the legislature, to look at how do we how do we strengthen it? Because, um, you know, for example, what gets in a file, what doesn't? We don't know. We don't know what gets manipulated, what gets changed, what get what gets added, whether or not adequate background checks or interviews of um, applicants are happening. I mean, this is brought up, you know, in the attempt to to focus tension, attention away from the hiring of this individual with official misconduct that 
you know, so recently has been in the news. Uh, to all these other issues now that are starting to bubble to the surface and come out, it doesn't play very well. Uh, and certainly, you know, Mr. Respicio's attempt to continue to attack my leadership. I mean, I stand by my leadership at the port. Um, you know, the current chairman of the board is his current boss. So uh, all these attacks, I mean, he, he had, he's very good at trying to, you know, focus other people in other directions. Let's look at this. I can stand for what I did and what decisions I made and what information I knew and what I had uh, and what my actions were consistent, including drug testing with regards to drug testing uh, employees at the port, even more so uh, with regards to designated positions. I mean, yesterday he said part of the story of, of the attorney general's opinion. He didn't go on to, to read the rest of it that said with regards to designated positions. And I, you know, I'm happy the attorney general clarified that, uh, that they can do those tests at, at any time. So to try again, it's all about optics and shifting away what's going on and trying to certainly discredit my leadership of the port so that he's not held accountable. He's currently in the seat. He's currently in the seat as general manager. And and while he talks about transparency, when the time comes when you're asking him questions, I mean, he's not answering them. He's, he's trying to turn the question around and, and, and make it seem as if we're the ones that are before his hearing. I mean, he's not the senator anymore. Uh, as I am no longer the general manager of the port, and I don't have an issue with that. I don't have the responsibility of carrying the port on my shoulders. Uh, you know, that that currently is his responsibility. And as a public official, he should be more responsive. And the irony of it all is while they're thinking that they're they're throwing the public's attention elsewhere, all they're doing is making the light bigger and brighter over the port because all this has done is raise bigger questions. There, there are issues there that were there before I came. There were issues there when I left the port. I'm never going to believe that because I was a general manager. I was able to resolve all the issues and everything is wonderful with the world. Uh, unfortunately, there are different dynamics that are set up there. There's a different agenda. There's different politics. That's not just all oh, in the, the elected officials of, on Guam. There's politics within the organization. There's people that have been able to build their kingdoms. There's people that have been able to bar barter favors to get things that they want there at the port all the way down to hiring as we're finding out. Uh, so I have no problem accounting for my time, but I think the, the continued attempt to try to shift that direction, uh, more the reason I think the light uh, should be placed back to really find out now what's really going on at the Port Authority. Uh, and so the people know, because while we're there to support the employees, and as I've mentioned time and time again, there are a lot of good people that do their job every day, that go to work there every day. But when you see all this other stuff happening, as Senator Tello mentioned at the end, I mean, I, I don't know this, Mr. Mendiola, and I wish him well that he's been successful in his recovery and, and changing his life for the better. But to put that at the end of the hearing, because that's the most recent employee they hired. I mean, he's trying to be ahead of the story before it gets, you know, becomes public by the media. He's going to announce that this is who I hired. This is the most recent hire. Uh, I don't know what all his convictions are for, but if it's drug related, um, you know, it really sets out the wrong message at a time in our community. Uh, when we should be doing everything we can from an official standpoint to minimize the, the opportunity of these drugs getting into our community and affecting affecting our families out there. And that's what we should be focused in our, our respective positions. But I think as the more Mr. Espicio continued to conduct himself as he has, I mean, I, I think the more attention he's, he's focusing right back at himself. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of the people at the port now, I'm sure probably are not feeling too good about all this negative publicity that they're continuing to get. I just really pictured in my mind a totally different type of hearing because you're right. The reason why this hearing was called was because the lieutenant governor's brother-in-law was hired down at the port, and he's got a questionable past, very questionable. But I don't feel like any of you guys on that committee really went in and asked about him as an individual. And Rory, uh, Uncle Rory, was able to muddy the water so much that I don't even know is there going to be a continuation? Because he didn't provide the information to the committee. What happened at the end of the hearing? Was Senator Talina like, okay, we're good. See you next year. Are we going to even I, I see think, any yeah. continuation or what, what's the deal? Yeah, I, I think, you know, personally that, you know, um, the chairwoman, uh, Senator Nelson is, is going to, you know, she's a person who follows up with things. That, that's what I appreciate about her. Um, I've also provided information on some of the comments that he made about being unconstitutional when it comes to drug testing. That is so untrue. He's he's uh, mixing those words up, uh, the intentions of it. So um, I've sent her some information uh, after the hearing too as well to discuss this. And I think that because in light of the lack of information that uh, um, 
the director provided that she's going to follow through and have another uh, round table. I mean, it's important for the public to see this. So I, I believe that the, the good senator will have an, an, a second or third round. This would be right, Senator Brown, a third round, I think. Oh, and I, 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 it needs to. Yeah, yeah. I think it's and, and also I want to point out, Chris, as a result of this issue, I mean, what has come to light is the fact that there has been no random drug testing that has occurred in the port for the last two years. I mean, a port of entry, a major port of entry to our community. And also the fact that, uh, you know, the current management team there is following the process of, you know, during our time we had, we had the directive very clearly with Governor Calvo, zero tolerance, zero tolerance. And now we're finding out, I guess you could have 20, 30, 40% tolerance of drug use because you're given the, and while it's allowed under the process, uh, you know, I had a different perspective and a different directive uh, where you can test positive for drugs in a designated position and being able to get the opportunity to get help and then come right back. And I don't, I don't know what follow through. He never elaborated on what follow through or follow up testing that he would have uh, to verify that that individual is indeed drug free and that, you know, they're abiding by that. Uh, that's their policy but that was never you know that was never forthcoming prior to all these issues being raised and now all of this question has come up again at a time when our community is suffering from you know from these terrible issues of drugs i mean to hear senator tello tell her story it's very emotional and many families are affected by it um and then when you have people in leadership that should be making better decisions to protect our community are not doing so uh, how could you not be angered and frustrated? And certainly because we are in a position as legislators. I mean, this is the reason I ran is because I'm so disappointed by this direction and leadership, these lowering of standards and then parading them as Senator uh, Tello mentioned around is that this is the standard that we should uphold rather than supporting the law abiding citizens in our community, the law abiding employees of the Port Authority that are that are that have not uh, done anything wrong other than come to work and do their job. But this is the kind of leadership standard that they're being subjected to. This is a, a leadership standard that our community is being subjected to. And I just don't think it's right. I think we're better than this. And we should expect better than what we're seeing now. I think at this point it would may, it would be more newsworthy if the port hired somebody without a criminal history. Um, yeah. Isn't that unfortunate? I mean, it is. And I, I get what you're saying, Senator. And, and, you know, no one is saying that you got to be a saint to work at the port. But, I mean, it's just, and to me, it's so simple and basic and we're all getting caught up in this and that's exactly what they want to talk about second chances but it's really just to me about you got a guy who was involved very involved with smuggling meth into the prison while he was working as a corrections officer he was fired rory in the hearing said he was let go or he left his job at doc no he was fired fired and so that's why when well, I when I'm they sure. talk about this interview I, panel, I'm yeah. just curious, like, what kind I'm of interview really, panel? I'm totally with you, Chris, and I think that's why it's important as these issues come up. Certainly, that's why I introduced this bill, um, that we should not have this sort of practice in the government of Guam, that we should have a higher standard. I mean, I wish people well that have not, you know, made the best of choices. No, You know, nobody's perfect. It's just a question of degree. But this should not be the standard, particularly at a point of entry. And then, you know, the other thing that's come up is the fact that you know, uh, uh, clearance from the district court of the federal court is not a requirement. I'm, I'm certainly looking into that. I'd be more than happy to introduce legislation to make that a standard requirement so that if now, while not all federal, you know, felonies happen at the district court, I mean, you can other other crimes elsewhere that you're convicted of. But uh, in this particular case, uh, obviously, I think there's a need for it. So there's no misunderstanding when someone does apply for a position, if they've had a federal conviction, if they don't reveal it themselves, uh, then the clearance should should bring that to light so that that can be so you know the hiring authorities and everyone else involved in the review process from hr through the panel that's doing the interviews uh can be aware of it uh i know senator mary's law was was put in place a couple of legislatures ago i mean personally i'm not supportive of it in my my perspective uh, having been in management for most of my almost half of my political uh, my life in government has been in manage a management position uh, because I think those things are critical to someone's character in making a determination. I mean, you could have the most excellent resume and everything looks good. You certainly can sound good. Uh, but if you do some research and, and find out that someone has been involved in not making the best of choice, particularly things that are drug related, uh, that that's a concern. It's a concern for me as a policymaker and, and where we can can look at policy uh, to to improve or enhance those standards. We're certainly very much I'm, I'm very much an advocate for that. All right. Senator Brown, since, um, since
since uh, Rory did bring it up during that oversight hearing, you listed off, well, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people that you may, you, you um, allege to have hired that had criminal records. You said you were not aware, but did you ever become aware? And if you, when you did become aware, if you did, you know, what did you do? There's a consistency in that. Were there drug tests and, and uh, at the port? Yes, there were by the hundreds of drug tests at the port during my tenure as general manager. Um, when information was made uh, uh, available to me, when I became aware of it, I did take action. I do use that example of the one individual who was in a designated position, a designated position that by virtue of that position, you cannot have a convicted felony on your record. That individual worked at the port for over 10 years. Uh, and the only way I found out about it was through federal sources that, oh, by the way, uh, you know, you need to check the background here because this individual has a convicted felony. Uh, we went back, I said, hey, I'd like to pull that folder of that employee. Let me see the folder. I looked at the folder. I mean, the individual didn't even indicate because it does ask the question, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Uh, that individual did not indicate that he that you know that individual had been convicted of a felony. And we went through the adverse action process and you know uh, terminated that individual. Uh, so if information is available to me, certainly I would take action. But when you have an organization that big, and as we're finding out, looking back in hindsight, that trusted individuals that should be in a position of responsibility and reviewing this information that are that have the job that is their job to make sure they properly vet these applicants. And certainly if there's an issue of concern, by all means, bring it to my attention, uh, especially when my directives are very clear and they know it's very clear because actions that I've taken actions that, that continuously and consistently, no matter who these people were, no matter what position they had, no matter who their relatives are, no matter where, what political party they were. I mean, they could have been the biggest Republican from whatever village if you violated these requirements. Um, you know, you you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with the consequences. So to try to now try and paint me up because I've raised this issue because I've introduced this bill with regards to um, misconduct and making this a standard now that if you're you're, you're charged with it, you you don't get to serve. If you're convicted of, you don't get to serve. To come back to the people of Guam and ask the people of Guam to to once again give you that opportunity when you've already been in a trusted position and you violated that position. We're all for second chances and we're all for kumbaya and, and, and working things out and, and wanting people to improve because it's certainly better for our community. But but do you put people that are convicted of drug related offenses back into the Port Authority of Guam that's a major port of entry? That's really the bottom line of looking at it. It's probably a policy issue that this current legislature may have to deal with and maybe make that a decision as to whether or not those restrictions should or can be provided because you look at all this dust kicking, this is all I see is a lot of dust kicking and their little networks of people on social media that are their friends, that they're playing this game. I, you know, I've went through this in the campaign. It's coming from the exact same source. They're gonna continue to attack me. They're gonna continue to discredit me, but that's not gonna stop me from standing up and speaking out. And it's unfortunate that for other members of the legislature like Senator Tello, who's also standing up and speaking out for her own views and her own principles of this issue as a policymaker, to have to fear attacks and harassment uh, because we're raising these issues. And we're duly at this point elected by the people of Guam to make these decisions. And it's really unfortunate that this is the response that we're getting as policymakers looking out for the better interest of our community. And I really think, you know, thank you, Senator Brown, on that. And and I, I really think that the people need to stop turning a blind eye. And, and they are doing it. I'm seeing people, I'm also getting texts coming my way and thanking us for uh, speaking out and, and pointing this out. And I think that everyone needs to do their part too. Our island cannot be plagued with this, this deadly disease of drugs. It's taking too many of our family away from us. Um, many of them are passing away from it. And... <laughs> it's it's just mind-boggling it's mind-boggling you know it's so just, I, I, can't I humbly ask yeah. the public out there to please you know let's let's beat this war on drugs let's win the war on drugs okay yeah i feel your frustration i mean it's it's, it's unfortunate that uh this administration has people goons on social media that they can tell to go attack whoever criticizes anything they do and that's even more unfortunate that some of our highest elected leaders rub elbows with with these people i mean i feel for you guys 
Uh, thanks for your time. I Thank know there's you. some public hearing stuff going on, but keep us posted. If you ever get that no, list. I'm you again I, I do have to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to to express and relay our position because as you mentioned there's a lot of attempts right now to try to repackage our message in terms of their own agenda and and to me if everything's on the up and up and everything's going good Chris and Sabrina we would not be seeing the response that we're seeing from the Port Authority of Guam it, it doesn't add up and it doesn't settle well Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you, Senator you. Tello. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. you. All right. And uh, everyone, create a great day. Well, Bye-bye. it's a little late for that. <laughs> Stay right. safe. Yeah, be safe, guys. Watch your back. <laughs> I didn't mean that as a threat. I just meant it as a friendly word of advice as a friend. Uh, 923. Guys, we'll take a quick uh, break. Yeah, this is a... I'm, I'm curious. Is there going to be a continuation? Are we ever going to see the list of... Um, Uh, and I mean, at, at the end of the day, well, what's going to happen is, the, you know, uh, Mr. Rosalind is going to stay in that job. He's going to have a full career. So is Mr. Mendiola. Um, but are we able to stop it moving forward? Well, we'll see with this bill. And I mean, I don't even know if it's out of committee yet. It's 923 anyway. We're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> although I could just go all day about this. 